this is going to be a little bit mathy, but it's also a little bit about the P8 scale. So if you have a calculator that's got a log button on it, all I have to do is teach you how to use that log button and you're good to go. And I'm actually getting a, um, you need to understand something about water. Water actually ionizes all by itself. So sometimes water will turn itself into H pluses and OH minuses. Now, how often does that happen? Well, this is happens like, oh, I don't know, point oh 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 no too many o's point oh 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 one percent of the time so it's not that it makes very many but it does make some and so we can say that for water the h concentration these little brackets right here mean concentration of so when i put H inside those little brackets, it means concentration of hydrogen ions. That means concentration of hydroxide ions. And in water, they'd be the same because water splits itself into one hydrogen and one hydroxide. Therefore, anything that is an acid is something that changes this whole effect. It causes there to be more H pluses than OH minuses. Now, that could be adding an H or it could be taking away OHs. That kind of depends on your point of view. Bases, therefore, are the exact opposite. Anything that causes there to be less H's and more OH. And so, for our purposes, H plus and H3O are the same thing. Hydrogen ions, hydronium ions, same thing. All right, I need you to get these facts, these first four facts in your notes. They're also on the very, very back, the very, very back, the back of your periodic table. Everything except for one of them, and I don't remember which one it is, but you can look on the back and see the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion always multiply together to be one times 10 to the negative 14th. The pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, pOH, is there is a pOH scale. The pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And then lastly, the pH and the pOH always add together to be 14. We will actually practice in class doing this, but you guys might wanna run through a couple of these. And I'm gonna talk for a second about uh, the pH scale. So let's pull up a picture of the pH scale. And as you can see, anything below seven is more acidic. Anything above seven is more basic. And, you know, you've got milk in there and you've got acid rain in there. And, you know, there's lots of things on the pH scale that you can look at. And, but just understand that a pH of 1 is drastically different than a pH of 2 or 3. I don't want you to go, oh, it's just 1, no big deal. Because the pH scale is a logarithmic base scale. So it's something based on powers of 10. You guys need to remember, since it's logarithmic, that every change of one pH is 10 times more concentrated. Think of this. The concentration of salt in your blood is 0.9%, okay? Less than 1%. The salt concentration in seawater is about 1.8 to 2.0%. Now, that's double. And you know how salty salt water is from the ocean and how salty your blood is. Can you imagine what it would taste like if it was 10 times as salty? That'd be a huge difference, right? You could barely even put that in your mouth. So I just want you to understand that when a pH jumps from like pH 1 to pH 2, that's a huge difference. And if it goes from 3 to 6, then that's a change of 10 times 10 times 10. So just realize that you've got that going on. Let's talk for a brief moment about what is pH and, and, and what is a log, right? So a log of something is basically saying, what is the exponent of the power of 10? So when you say log of, let's say a thousand, what you're really asking it is 10 to what exponent is equal to a thousand? Right? And you can say, well, 10 to the third, so the question mark is equal to three. So what's log of a thousand? Oh, okay, that's three. So what does that mean to you? It's just the exponent. That's what you're calculating when you do a pH. So let's say you have a solution that is one times 10 to the negative fourth 
molar in hydrogen ion, okay? Well, what does that look like? Well, you know, really that's 0.0001 molar hydrochloric acid. Well, you're like, well, that's not very strong at all. Well, that, if we wanted to know what the pH is, we would take the log of that, right? So what is the log of one times 10 to the negative fourth? Well, remember it's 10 to what power is equal to 10 to the negative fourth? The answer is obviously negative four. The log of 10 to the negative fourth is negative four. So when we take the pH of something, we're taking the negative of the log. Inverse logs mean really 10 to the power of whatever you put in is equal to some number. If I say, what's the inverse log of four? That means 10 to the fourth power is equal to what number? And that would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which would be 10,000, right? That's what an inverse log is. So if we're looking for pH, we're looking for the log of something. If we're trying to find the concentration of something, we're actually going to be doing an inverse log. An inverse log probably looks like this on your calculator, 10 to the X, okay? And usually it's above the log button. So you guys might wanna look on your calculator and find the log button. And above it, usually you have to push the second bu button or the function button or something, is 10 to the X, okay? So just make sure that you know what that is. We're just going to use these four equations. That's all we're going to use. We're, sometimes we'll use one of them. Sometimes we'll use two of them. You may use the equation once. Someone else may use the equation, uh, may use a different equation, and yet you'll still get the same answer because all these things, all these equations actually tie into each other. Okay, so don't think that there's only one way necessarily to do things sometimes. Thank you.